All right, thanks for staying with us now. The World Bank has warned that the newly redesigned Naira, which went into circulation recently, may have negative effect on um, economic activities, especially poor Nigerians due to its timing and short transition period. And the Washington-based bank revealed this in a new report titled Nigeria Development Update. And this came amid the mixed reactions that have been trailing the newly redesigned notes. Now, the Central Bank of Nigeria had last year, or rather last month, unveiled the new um, 1,500 and 200 notes as part of the measures to mop up excess cash in circulation. Ransom payment of, uh, for kidnapping, terrorism, financing, counterfeiting, and amongst other things. The World Bank in its report, however, said that the new policy would negatively affect small businesses, especially those who day-to-day -day cash transactions, you know, who deal with day-to-day -day tran um, cash transactions. So what are your thoughts on this? Do you think the Naira redesign is helping or hurting the poor? Now, please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 You can also tweet at us at Weisho Africa 1 with the hashtag Weisho. So I'll bring in Chinasa in a minute, but I just wanted to hear your thoughts, um, Diola and... Um, um, Jennifer, what are your thoughts? Do you do you think this redesign, you know, would um, help or it would to hurt, you know, especially these people in the streets? So today I had an episode. I was just doing an experiment. I wanted to. I've never bought things in traffic, never. But I decided, you know what? Let me try these traffic vendors. So I said, okay, let me buy this um, power charger, right? So I asked him. Do you have a charger? He brought the charger and everything. So when I was about to pay, I said, do you want to take the new note or you want the old note? And he goes, ah, any note where you give me, your, you know. I was not worried, telling him that, are you not worried that the old note, you will not be able to use it if you collected the, the old note from me? He said, madam, money na money. As you, far as I say, you pay me my money complete, I go collect the money. So it just got me a bit worried that if the CBN is going to stop this um, notes in circulation from 31st of January. How do these businesses, because again, most of these businesses really that would be really impacted, they deal mainly in cash transactions, right? They're on the streets, you know, they are the, you know, the people circulate and it's a cash um, flow structure that they work with. So how do you think this would help? Would it help or to hurt them? Hmm. So for me, I think I'll come from what I've seen in the news recently. To be honest, this is my first time Ah, is it like holding these <laughs> new notes? And I mean, it's interesting to see, and we've seen a lot of complaints about it in the news. And I saw today that um, the POS operators are also complaining. Um, they interviewed some POS operators in Abuja, and what they're saying is that they actually charge people a whole lot more when they ask to dispense the new naira notes so they charge you 200 to 2000 naira if you're withdrawing 5000 naira they will charge you 500 naira as opposed to probably the 100 naira they used to charge before and then one of the complaints that they, they made was that when they go to the bank to get the new naira notes that the banks were only giving them 5000 naira new notes hey so basically they come back and if 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 as a citizen you go to them and you want to actually collect money and you tell them is the new naira notes that you want because a lot of people are rushing to actually get new naira because they don't want to still be in possession of the old notes so when you get there they only give you limited amounts and what he tells them is only the one of the guys one of the peers operators says that he tells the people who are coming to him that you should only withdraw the amount you want to use now because he can't give you a lot of it. And even if he's giving you a certain amount, he, he's going to charge you more. No, but that is it. wickedness. Yes. And being exploitative because CBM, the bank that they collected, so even if the bank is giving them a minimal amount of money, the bank has not charged them extra to extra give them that extra money. Yeah. So why are you charging the So they're basically just exploiting That's exploitative. all exploitative for it. So you know some of these POS people are in the market. So just imagine a market woman who needs cash would go to the guy okay i need to collect that five thousand or ten thousand yes so you're taking more than she bargained for and it's not going to help her because at the end of the day by the time she goes home and she calculates how much she has made for the day she has eaten into her profit let me hear your thoughts Jill, and I'll, I'll bring okay so answer. i think um, it's going to hurt them the it's not in doubt that the policy is good but if you want to effect policies especially when you're dealing with all the demography of people, you need to understand that the campaign has to be in such a way that you're able to reach 
all these users. Mm. Now, for a lot of all these grassroots people, first of all, they don't even understand what this redesign is about. They, they, they are not concerned about counterfeiting or all that. They, they don't know that. For them, it's just, I just want to trade. You know, so when you take that, nobody is going to explain anything to them. So first of all, there is the fear of, oh, I don't even want to take this new note because it might be fake. Mm. They have that. I have experienced that. You know, I went to the market and I said, oh, I have new notes. And the woman just said to me, I, I don't want I, I, I don't want I don't want this new note because you people and lack Kowi, that's what she said and that means you these educated people you people have come again you know so we must be able I, I think we must think of these people in the markets in remote areas on the streets who mm. have no access to the education that well the the elite or the supposed people in urban places would have to understand oh okay this policy in the long run you know might be good for all of us but i mean day-to-day -day trade these people they, they bank on what they make in the market to feed their families mm. so when they are unable to meet that demand then it becomes something else there's more meanness in the society it, it's just it, it just spirals out of control mm. really you know so it's interesting. I yeah. hear you say that there's a big gap in yeah. communication. But mm -hmm. let me bring in our guest. Tinyasa Collins Ogbo is a strategic communications and advocacy specialist with a career spanning over 14 years across the financial services, professional services, and development sector. She currently works at Africa Practice, a pan African mission led consultancy where she specifically or, um, heads the Inclusion for All, um, um, Inclusion for All, an advocacy initiative that seeks to use data evidence to deepen the knowledge and understanding of barriers that keeps um, the vulnerable population in Nigeria excluded from formal um, financial services and she's joined us live in studio she is a friend of the house if you know you know if you do not know you do not know <laughs> hi Nasa how are you doing hi. first of all you look amazing by the thank way you. thank you for joining us this evening Thank you very much. Thank so, you. I mean, Nasa, this conversation, we've had it in different quarters. A lot of people are actually talking about the Naira redesign, how it's going to affect a lot of things. But people really, in my opinion, I think there's a huge um, demography, like um, Diola had put it, that, that we're not paying attention to. And these people really do not know that 31st is 31st. Because the CBN governor is not bulging. He's saying that whether you like it or not, by the 31st, that note would be obsolete, your old Naira note. But these people deal with petty trade. They deal with every day. They deal with cash every day. So how, first of all, what do you think this policy, the redesigning, do you think it's helping the poor or it's hurting the poor? Then you now tell us what you think should be the better idea to go about it. So to answer that question directly, and thank you very much, Owa. So, you know, the reason that we first of all ask whether it's helping or hurting the poor is because there's the two sides to this policy. And as Diola mentioned, we see the um, positive side of the policy. We understand what it seeks to achieve, which for us is actually um, a step in the right direction, like I keep saying, because it's, um, it's headed towards cashless um, economy, and which is what we advocate for, how we can get the excluded populations into formal financial services. However, the approach that has been taken more from a process standpoint and timelines is what we are concerned about it and which is why we're concerned about it's hurting the poor because it, it looks like it would push them further out of formality, which is basically exclusion. So the, the objective that the CBN is trying to achieve, which is positive and they're trying to do the right thing, it's probably going to be, you know, um, it will be counterproductive eventually just because the right process wasn't um, adopted. So in terms of what I think, right, um, so at Inclusion for All, we first of all use data to, to establish why this is really a problem. So if you look at it from that perspective to say that, first of all, is there a huge population of these people that we care about? Yes, there's a significant number of them. So from EFINA's data in 2020, that's the Access to Finance Survey Report, there was over well over 38 million unbanked that live below the poverty line. Whoa. And so that's about 45% of the entire unbanked adult population in Nigeria. That's at 2020. Now, um, these people, from our own um, data breakdown and analysis, 
are, are probably living in rural communities and they're probably even female. Now, if you look at the um, data, the recent um, multi-dimensional poverty data from MBS, of the um, poor population, about 133 of them, 106 million of them live in rural communities, right? So again, it's a, there's a huge population of these people. So CBN has designed a policy which, in truth, seeks to strengthen the financial services and the ecosystem economy. Mm -hmm. yeah. and the economy in the long term, right? But the timeline in which they're doing it is what is causing the issues. And that's what everybody is clamoring for. Like, can we consider a longer timeline so that this doesn't actually disproportionately affect the people in the grassroots? Hmm. So, aside um, a longer timeline, what what do you think would have, should have been the best approach for CBN to take concerning this? I think to start with, um, I think the timeline is the most um, is the major issue with this. In terms of other approaches and just looking at the groups that we care about and the recent um, introduction or the launch of the cash flow program, because part of what we would suggest is. Before you design your policy, you have to think about, all, as Diola mentioned, all the different demographics, right? And so do you want to, you have to probably design approaches tailored to those different groups. And that's what they're essentially doing now with this cash flow program, a targeted solution. The only and it's challenge, targeting the... the it's targeting the rural mm -hmm. communities, but in the time that they're doing it, because there's an incongruence with yeah. the agent network that they're leveraging, the size of the population of these people, and some of the requirements. So there's all these different gaps that haven't come together. So whilst the approach is targeted and it makes sense, it's still not being done properly just because certain things are not in place, the mm -hmm. timeline. So what we're asking for is, can we have a longer timeline so that you can do the right thing? So speaking to sensitization, letting people actually get educated about what this is. I think it was what I mentioned earlier that some people, do, even, even people in urban um, locations yeah. don't have the correct information. Mm -hmm. So imagine someone in a, in a hard to reach community with the poor infrastructure, they don't have the connectivity or the network or all the things that we have access to, to mm. have this information. So um, in terms of approach, I think the main thing right now is the timeline. Other things they seem to be thinking of, which we're seeing by way of the launch of the um, cash flow program. Mm. So yeah. Okay, Jola, I'll let you come in. But you see, just to touch on this timeline, because um, the conversation we had yesterday mm -hmm. was around this. And a lot of people called into the show, and they were saying that Nigerians have a penchant, that's the word, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for, you know, waiting. Yeah, so that even, minute, yes, right. that even if they gave us 10 years. Mm. And I totally, yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. That Nigerians will still wait until the 10th year the 365th day of mm -hmm. that 10th year mm -hmm. to go to the bank to swap this money. Right. So that some, so, so some callers actually called in and said, no, they're actually in strong support with the CBN and the timeline, given that what we do with NIS and all of those things, you wait till the deadline before you go and submit it. So do you really think it is the um, timeline that is the major crux of this issue? It's the timeline. And I hear what they're saying. And in truth, yes, Nigerians have a behavioral pattern that shows, and over time, our policymakers have understood that this is how Nigerians are. So yes, we, I, we're, we're not actually, um, we, we don't have a problem with the aggressive policy stance. It's just, again, you need time to do certain things. So it could have been six months which in other claims, I think in the UK, it takes about two years for you to do this sort of thing. We're not even saying we did it two, two years, but six weeks is not a lot of time hmm. because you have a lot of gaps. There are still people that don't understand. You need to educate people. Hmm. They don't have that literacy level. There's so many different parts that need to be fixed. That's why, again, we can't say it's not a timeline issue, but I understand what they're saying. So some of those, some, some Nigeria needs those policy, aggressive policy stands just so that things can move. And it's what we've seen over time, even with the names in, people kept get. I mean, that went on for over a year, right? Yeah. There was a lot of sensitization. But even on 4th of April, people, there were still a lot of people that, so you, from, from that kind of perspective, you see why um, the policymakers would take this sort of approach. But what we're saying in this particular instance is, it's significantly short. It's a very short, I mean, um, it was October, right? Mm -hmm. That it was announced. And then the, yep. the money didn't come in circulation until, what, December, December 15? 15, mm -hmm. yeah. So between December 15 and January, are you kidding? It's still not in circulation mm -hmm. because the, in the circulation. people were still withdrawing so, yes. old notes from December yeah. 15 up to January. Yeah. We're still withdrawing the old notes. Yeah. But let me let Diola come in. Okay, so um, I, I think I want to ask about the role of the banks now in terms of distribution. Mm. I mean, 
there is obviously a gap. CBN is saying, there's a lot of distribution. We've done our part. But the banks are saying, okay, you know what? We, we, don't, have. we don't have, or maybe they have, and they're being selective about who they give. But at the same time, I also want to, you know, dovetail it into POS agents. Mm -hmm. Now, these are people operating at grassroots level. Mm -hmm. So you find that the average IRC card, who probably is not included in financial services, mm -hmm. can easily, well, maybe on the average, say, okay, you know what, at least I can still do my financial transactions through a POS. Okay, so my question is, if the CBN keeps about this cashless policy which is good have they put in measures to address the increasing amount of frauds and scams that would happen because that is going to happen somebody somewhere is going to rip off some uneducated woman because she doesn't know better you know again this is i know it's moving a little bit outside of you know naira design but again at the end of the day it's still the same thing because these women will feel okay somebody can say, can't bring your cash let me I help you to lose, go and change exactly i can't mm. lose this sale today let me just quickly go and again you will sense the desperation in them to just make a sale in a day just mm. to feed their own household so i suspect or i not that i even suspect i've seen it happen so many times where they're helpless mm. so a lot of them will get robbed a lot of them would lose their means of livelihood. Like you said, this timeline, I, I, I don't know, is CBN listening? I mean, are people really <laughs> deliberating with CBN to say, this can't happen. Mm. You have to understand all the gaps that this, you know, presents. You all know, right, so Nasa, I'll let you come in to answer that question. But let's quickly go on a very short break. When we come back from the break, we'll continue the conversation. Stay mm -hmm. with us. Thanks for staying with us now. If you just tuned in, we're discussing the topic, Naira Redesign, Helping or Hurting the Poor. And we have with us Chinasa Collins Obo. I remember you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to the rate one eight zero three four six six three. You can also tweet at us at Wayshow Africa one with the hashtag Wayshow. So Jola had asked you about how it's impacting, you know, and how how uh, what measures or policies has uh, CBN put in place to even help. Because what she said is true. I might go and meet the mama in the village that doesn't know anything, but the son the son always gives her money and i know that she probably always keeps cash mm. in the house for mm -hmm. you know different household things she wants to buy mama let me help you take your money so things like that might happen mm -hmm. right so are there measures in place you know what's inclusion for her doing to help because you people are actually targeted at helping the people mm -hmm. you know that cannot be served right underserved and you know so what i what, what can be done Okay, so from a CBN perspective, in terms of measures that they have in place, I would say that maybe nothing specific to, to this particular issue, but then I think leveraging the consumer protection department of the mm -hmm. CBN, this is why they exist. And so as more of these sort of issues get reported, then they can start to document and then start to um, map out an approach or a, re a response mm -hmm. or you know, a way of addressing these particular issues. And I guess as with every policy that comes out, they learn as they go and um, design solutions to them. Um, from our side as Inclusion for All, our role um, is to represent the voice of the poor and the marginalized communities. And what that basically means is that we're not just speaking out of passion, we're also speaking from facts, um, facts from data. So it's not us saying that, oh, we're just really sad that these people are going to be hurt. It's data actually shows us and that this is why you should be concerned and why you should take this into consideration. So if we know that, uh, over 38 million uh, um, are, are unbanked and they're poor. And we know that in terms of their behavior, their savings behavior, they prefer to save in cash, right? Mm. And the reasons for that is also, first of all, proximity. That's mm. the highest of so the top four reasons. Proximity, then there's we earn a daily income, then I don't have a job, and it's too expensive, and there's trust. So all these issues, that's why they don't save. So if you start to look at it from that perspective, understanding their nuanced challenges, then you want to 
be sure that in whatever um, policy you're designing, are you taking those into consideration? Also factoring in the timeline that it will take to solve or overcome those barriers, because that's essentially what those things are, the barriers to their inclusion. And when you make this sort of policy decisions, it's like you're creating more barriers. Hmm. Mm. So I was just going to say, because again, you know, we were talking in the makeup room about yeah. how these people actually trust. So what is the difference mm -hmm. between these Ajo women? Because I see a lot of them do it. Yeah. The woman will... So me, I, you know, the, the question <laughs> why they ask, Tina, sir. But I know they fear say this woman, on her way, they can, they can collect all your money. Do you understand? Like, it's, and it's mm -hmm. like that person is untouched. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows that she goes around to collect mm -hmm. 500, 1,000 naira from these people. Mm. No, none of those area boys attacks her. Yeah. The because money is always the Ajo. So that's what I'm saying. So how come they've been able to build that trust system? Mm. Do you understand? Because they actually do trust those um, people holding their mm. daily their cash, money. you know, yeah. than banks, yeah. you know. Is it because of those small charges? Because banks have even taken off all those charges as well. Mm. Or is there hidden charges? I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, there are hidden charges. No, so from, from the start, well, I mean, in terms of why there's that trust, I think it's just like a family. So if you're in a community where yeah. you know one another and you know that somebody is your friend's mother or your, you're more likely to trust that person and you see them or you see a family member. The bank is far from them. They don't even know these people. Somebody mm -hmm. comes to tell, why am I supposed to trust you? Then I now hear from my friend, like the one that we saw on social media, that that's how I put 600000 in that mm -hmm. bank they came to sell to us. Who? And you now come back and tell them that the shopping bank, and nobody will answer you. Word of mouth strives. And yeah. so that if my next door neighbor had a bad experience, then you're unlikely to get me because what Yarisika went through, <laughs> me, I cannot let it happen to me. <laughs> <laughs> let me just go to Taufik. Mm -hmm. That I know where his mother, if he doesn't give my money, I'll report to his mother, mother that yeah. my mother Taufik, give, do you understand? Yeah. So that's, that's part of what the, the financial service providers need to also start looking at. Mm -hmm. How do we build trust? And so in this Naira redesign regime, that's what we're also saying, that there, there's so many behavioral issues and it's not, see Lagos, is different from Sokoto. Sure. Their, their behavioral patterns, their psychographics are so different so that what applies in Lagos will not apply in Sokoto. That's why we talk about targeted solutions and targeted policies, like thinking of all these different parts of this whole system and how do we create something that is all encompassing. <sighs> you know, I have one more thing I wanted to say, <laughs> but I don't know. <laughs> Jennifer, pardon me. I'll come back to you. So why are beggars, because I took a story mm -hmm. that beggars were rejecting old Naira notes. Mm. Yeah. So now two things is it's a bit troubling for me. Mm. That the beggars Jonathan, the beggars are rejecting old Naira notes. But somebody that was buying commodity from that is your business. Mm. Beggars is free money. Because if you beg me mm -hmm. and I give you money, it's free money for exactly. them. But you are you not afraid of losing your capital? Because if I buy something from you, definitely you didn't. You would lose part of your capital if you're not able to use that Change that, that, mm -hmm. that uh, currency, right? So I'm wondering where is the where is the where is the disconnect mm. there? Because beggars that are they, are they seem to be a lot more enlightened to know that these old um, these mm. old notes will no longer be <laughs> useful to me, so I am rejecting it. So I wanted to test it. <laughs> to give beggar two hundred naira, oh two hundred naira knows. There's you know, a reason why they're enlightened. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's, there's a reason. reason. So that's what I'm asking. It's so an organized. It's yeah, it's an it they're, they're yeah. organized. So the thing is, even it's even like with even with the beggars that yeah. you see, they have heads. Yeah. They have exactly. leaders, and these people are educated. educated. Giving them targets. Yes, yes. yes. absolutely. If yes. you go, because I mean, if you, if they send out twenty beggars mm. on the streets, and they all come back with the old naira notes, and by the time <laughs> is January thirty first, what would they do with the money? So at the end of the day, they are going to make a loss. So they would have told them, see, as you're going out today for your market, though. <laughs> Come with naira notes. It's stronger. You have to come in with the new naira notes, yeah. and there's nothing anybody but can do about yeah. it. So you go out, they give you old. I know you're a beggar, but ah, madam, it's new. Give me the new beggar. It. Beggar <laughs> has choice. A beggar has choice. <laughs> but that's what I mean. So I mean, let's uh, go ahead. <laughs> Jennifer, it's okay. <laughs> it is well. Uh, I'm in shock. Oh, that's go ahead. I mean, uh, as, as, aside, aside that, you were talking about the uh, market women who give their money to Ajo and Nasa already explained all of that and I think another thing is the fact that a lot of them don't want to leave their businesses to enter the bank to queue. Yeah, we know absolutely. how long it takes. There are some certain banks these are the banks they call bank for the people because it's mm. you find a lot of people there, a lot of young people old people because I think they've done a lot of sensitization or their sales people have actually gone they, what, their bank, their sales people are working. 
But then if you go there on a normal day, it is filled to the brim. Sometimes I've seen these banks where people are standing and queuing till the yeah. door. So you don't expect a market woman who is trying to, because her head, while she's there and she's wasting time trying to deposit um, maybe 5K that she made that day mm -hmm. or 10,000 that she made that day. She's thinking about, oh, I'm sure I would have made um, 500 naira now by this time or somebody would have come to my store to buy something. And a lot of them don't want to close their shop, especially those who don't have sales girls or sales boys that are assisting them or even their kids that are assisting them. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to go to the bank to queue and stand mm -hmm. so if someone is coming around and say ah give me your money and we help you save it you will just mm -hmm. freely give yeah. it to them mm -hmm. saves time wow that's that's, that's a valid idea. point yeah. that you make and it's so true and that's something that we also um identified with um the reason why a lot of people in the rural communities especially the females don't have the nin so it's this process that is always designed without the poor in mind because mm -hmm. they just assume everybody's in lagos so um First of all, as a woman in the north, I probably need to get permission from my, my husband, husband before I can go and do certain things. So it takes me time to get that permission. I have a business that I'm running. Um, I'm the one looking, I'm the caregiver, so I'm looking after the kids in the house. So we, you see, I don't have a lot of time to spend doing something that does not translate to direct money for me because I earn a daily income. So there's only, time is truly money. Mm. And so if I make the trip to queue i hope i'm going to get you know what i'm i'm after mm. in 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 sensible time because i have a business to go back to so it's a tr it's an actual it's an actual problem so that if i if i can't if i can't do it then i'm just probably for, going to forget about it because nobody's giving me money i'm earning a daily income i have a family to feed i have a family to look after and i have mm. permission to get from my husband he may not allow me the second time Mm -hmm. So yeah, you make a very valid yeah. point, Jennifer. I mean, talking about cash and people who save, um, I'll call it manually. I mean, you're not going to the bank to put this money. Uh, there are people who have Kolo, mm. piggy bank. Mm. So is this the point where they break? They have to. <laughs> <laughs> if they've not broken it since, yeah, they that's... have to. <laughs> because now you have to break it. Mm. And then take all the old Naira notes, to the go bank. to the bank, yeah. collect new Naira notes, no, so and then buy a new mm -hmm. piggy bank yeah. or new Colo. To the process, so yeah. Was there no yeah. better solution for... I, I'm really concerned about this, these daily earners and cash mm -hmm. yeah. people. Mm -hmm. yeah. Don't you think the banks are lazy a bit? Because, I mean, you said something just mm -hmm. now. When it's time to open an account, bank sends out, they send out, Just, they think yeah. as they calculate, I don't get a solution for them, but they need to pay me for it. You know, you, 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 you send in aggressive marketing to get those accounts opened. But when it comes to the services, right, servicing the people that have decided to open the account, mm. you're hard to find. I've been trying to reach my account officer. Now, I've not been able to find account officer because I need statement to be able to, to pay government their tax, <laughs> you know. Do you get my point? So don't you think the banks are a bit lazy in helping this poor and underserved to, you know, at least make them feel they matter, they are important? Hmm. Good question. So first of all, you have to understand that the bank is a business. Mm. And so if it doesn't make economic sense for them, if it does, it's not profitable, then they're unlikely to focus on that. So whilst we can wear our empath hats and be like, oh, but do you not care about these people? It's about how much time do I have to expend in servicing these groups of people versus the amount of time I spend on a, a, a more profitable segment and what I get out of it. So which has always been the conversation around financial inclusion. The banks don't find those segments attractive. Are you sure? I beg to no, disagree with NASA. Mm. Diamond Bank, mm -hmm. they, they are, they, they've, they've buried them now, so mm -hmm. I can call their name. They saw that market yeah. mm -hmm. where no one was looking sure. at that direction. Mm -hmm. They went into that market because they understood that mass market was the market. Mm. And Diamond Bank went with aggression. They started bringing in the numbers. So a lot of these banks that were big boy banks said, uh -uh, what's Diamond Bank doing right that they were not doing right? They now started you know, to copy, but by then it was too late because Diamond Bank had mopped up the entire, you know, uh, mass market cash. So I don't believe that it is not profitable because, go no, ahead. It's, no, not that it's not profitable, but how much of your resources do you have yeah, to put out to get yeah. that amount? Yeah. And you have to understand that Diamond Bank had a, a very strong retail strategy. Yeah. That was their focus. So it made sense for them to, to pursue people in that segment. Other banks didn't have that kind of strategy. And when you say profitable, again, over what period? 
in my banking career, early before Diamond Bank even started financial inclusion or whatever, Stambik had gone into that market. And one of the things that we realized very quickly trying to bank the low income segment was that the bank wasn't ready for it because it was it's a loss leading segment to start with because you have to put in a lot of investment to be able to reach them because you have to think of the infrastructural gaps. You have to think of so many things. So it costs a lot. And then by the time you look at making, so yes, they're strengthening their numbers. And if you're patient enough, yes, it'll be profitable. So not that it isn't profitable, but in what time frame and do they have the patience? When you measure mm. what the inputs uh, and, and the, the, output, the, and yeah. the outputs. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Um. Okay, so, um, well, I, this is not a question. It's just um, an observation. Mm -hmm. So again, for macro MSMEs and all that, I mean, let's, let's now say that they've all come into the the use of financial services and everybody is trying to do the transfers and mm -hmm. whatnot, trying to get their business and all. Um, I, I'm hoping that, you know, the banks are, they have the infrastructure to deal with the, 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 the volume of transactions that through. would be coming through. Because I'm, today, right? e exactly, because if we're going to have problems where the market people or the MSMEs are unable to verify payments, you know, they stand to lose quite a whole lot. Mm. And um, I, I, I just hope, and, and that makes this whole thing, this cashless p policy, not attractive mm. for them. You know, it's going to be a hard sell because they're going to tell you, listen, I'm losing money daily. I can't. I you can't do this, do I, can't, I can't do that, you know, so. I do, I do. I hear what she's saying because, again, mm -hmm. um, what we also believe is that there's so many different parts of the ecosystem, right? Mm -hmm. And there are people playing different roles. And how ready are those different parts? Mm -hmm. So there's a readiness challenge, which is, again, where we keep speaking to timelines. So what you're trying to do is not a bad thing. But have you done, like, an audit to understand how ready they are for this change that you're introducing into the markets, right? How ready are the banks to service these people digitally? Mm, yeah. um, how, how ready are your agents to open accounts for these people? Do they have the, do you know, is there capacity building for them to be able to open accounts in record time? Do mm. the people that you're, well, the different groups of people, do, do they have the required documentation mm. to even fulfill some of the um, objectives that you have? Those, those are the things. So yes, there's, an ecosystem readiness assessment that, in terms of approach, that maybe should have been done. Like, okay, how ready are all these different parts before we go into the, into the market with this? But um, mm -hmm. CBN has their reasons. Can you paint a picture what 31st of January will look like chaos. in banking halls? Chaos. <laughs> chaos. Please, chaos. let me chaos. tell them. <laughs> it's no, chaos. no, because, go ahead. And just more because, again, people have started to set their own personal deadlines. So people stopped collecting old notes as at last week i was in the cab with some guy and he says the filling station wouldn't allow him um pay with cash because they were not collecting old notes and mm -hmm. i think to myself this is you in lagos and he had the option of paying with his card right so mm -hmm. he was out of that situation so what happens to yarisika mm. in um somewhere in five in, in isaiah or something that doesn't have a card and then she has to pay and someone's saying that they won't collect like first of all she almost go crazy you know like mm -hmm. what's going on 31st we you know again we don't know why um the cbn is insisting that this this deadline holds but from what i'm hearing even from within the urban locations people are just not ready how much more people in hard to reach communities and the cash swap program has not been given the time to actually be as effective as it can be more so i hear so like i said there's the gap in terms of agent availability or coverage but then cbn is also um selecting agents so it's not all agents so i, I understand that abuja and lagos agents are exempt i assume that's because they, they don't believe that the there's a rule there's a huge rural population that requires this sort of You'll service be shocked. i know <laughs> but so those are the things that make me wonder if I mean, by 31st, how many people would have been reached and what happens in the banks? Even the banks will probably just shut down and say, well, I don't. <laughs> I'm not sure they can <laughs> <continue. Just laughs> comment. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh All right, so we have a comment here. Good evening, my dear beautiful sisters of what are you saying? Ways. Aww. Naira Redesign. 
helping or hurting the poor. It is definitely hurting the poor because the poor cannot gain access to it. My dear beautiful sister, Ajola made mention of some market women rejecting the new notes simply because they are not sure of it, if it is fake or not. I think there should be an awareness whereby these people should be explained to and educate them how to differentiate the fake notes from the real ones. Also, the time frame is, frame is important and I insist that the deadline should be extended because it is too short. Three bosses for my dear beautiful sister Chinelo. She did a very good job anchoring the show yesterday. My name is Daniel Ilo, Way's regular fan. Thank, Thank you, you, Daniel. Daniel. <laughs> she did an amazing job. Go ahead. Okay, um, Naira Design is not helping the poor but rather hurting because there was not enough time to educate the poor masses. Secondly, I thought the Naira redesign was meant to uplift the quality of Naira in circulation that was very dirty to behold. In fact, the new Naira redesign is even less in quality than the ones that they want to put, in, they want to put out of circulation. For me, the redesign was just in color and nothing else. We Nigerians are very wicked to ourselves. The redesign looks like it is after some people and not for the whole interest of all Nigerian people. I thought the redesigned Naira would be in circulation together with the old ones. Then with time, the old ones will gradually go out of circulation. The United States of America has their new $100 bill notes in circulation together with their old $100 bill. Their old $100 did, did not cease to serve as their legal tender just because they printed new hundred dollar bills in nigeria we want people to go through hell just because you want to make a point sanctus hmm. on that note nasa <laughs> in one word are you hopeful i think i'm hopeful you know even in spite of hearing the cbn governor say nothing is changing there's no compelling reason to change the deadline I think that if maybe, maybe he'll wear his empath hat and see that, you know what, this is affecting um, the grassroots and let's do something about it. I know I said two weeks, maybe that's not enough, but let's start from there. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much, Janessa. Yeah, you. You've been an amazing guest. Thank you, Diola. Thank you, um, Jennifer. Now, before we go, ensure you follow us across all our social media platforms. Remember to like, share, invite your families and friends to watch and follow um, the conversation. Now, if you missed our quote for the day, here it is again. Um, if I had to run a company on three measures, those measures would be customer satisfaction, um, employee satisfaction, and cash flow. Um, so cash flow, very, very important. We'll see you guys live on Monday as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy.